Today, we're talking about the Nike Odyssey React 2 after 100 miles. Sixteen point zero three miles, eight minutes, eleven seconds per mile today. Out there with my running buddy, running in the Nike Odyssey React Flyknit Two, or is it the Nike Odyssey React Two with Flyknit? A bit of a very midwestern Chicago Saturday spring day today. Uh, a couple of days ago, earlier this week, I was out there running in shorts. Today, we're out there, we're running in gloves, and it feels like winter again. Uh, but if you don't like the weather in the Midwest, way today. Talking about this shoot, which has been a bit of a surprise for me over the last 100 miles, I've actually really been enjoying this shoe with a couple of caveats. But before we get into that, I do want to go over some disclosures for the shoe. This was a pair of shoes that was sent to me by Roadrunner Sports. Uh, however, they're not paying me to make this video and Nike's not paying me to make this video. And neither Nike or Roadrunner Sports is going to get a chance to see this video or have any editorial control uh, or any input. They won't be able to see it, this video until you guys get a chance to see this video. And now with the disclosures out of the way, let's talk about the Nike Odyssey React to with Flyknit. I keep saying it to with Flyknit rather than Flyknit 2, although I think that's a technical name because the Odyssey React Flyknit 1 didn't have Flyknit in it. So it is a version 2 shoe, but the version 2 is the first one with Flyknit. Hopefully that all made sense. Now, my first kind of take on this shoe and the reason why I didn't run in this shoe last year is because when the version one of the shoe came out, it really just seemed like a knockdown or a cheaper version of the Epic React One. So I kind of stayed away from it. I had my experience in the Epic React One and I felt like I like that a lot. I don't really need to have a cheaper version of it. I didn't really see the need to do that. But having run in this shoe this year, I think that was maybe a mistake because this shoe is definitely a little bit different. It feels like an Epic React in the sense that there's an all React midsole. And so in that sense, it's similar. But to me, really, the way that this shoe is shaped, there's like an angle of attack difference, in my opinion, that reminds me less of the Epic React, but more of the Pegasus 35. So to me, my take on this shoe so far, at least in the initial stages, and even to now after 100 miles, is that the Odyssey React Flyknit 2, or the Odyssey React 2 with Flyknit, is more of the Pegasus 35 for people who don't like 
Zoom Air because those two shoes to me are the most similar. So in terms of how the shoe's been holding up, the shoe started off feeling a little bit snug and it continues to do so. I get a lot of questions all the time about people saying, I'm trying on this shoe, it's got fly in it, how much is it gonna stretch? I think that fly in it molds to your foot over time, but I don't really think it stretches. So a shoe that's snug with fly in it, when you first get it, is gonna stay snug the entire time. Now, I think that the Odyssey React 2 is supposed to be a more snug fitting shoe, more of a running shoe fit than say the Epic React, but I don't know if it's just this color or if this, if it's all of the Odyssey React 2, the fit is a bit too snug. And it's one of those things where I'm not gonna tell people to go size up, but if you have the opportunity to try them in store first, I highly recommend you do that. If you can't, then I would say, probably want to size up. I went with my regular size nine in these and they just feel tight. A lot of times I'll wear these to work so that way I can run commute home in them. And I find myself whenever I wear these, somewhere in the middle of the day, just taking them off because there's just a lot of pressure that's on the toe box and the shoes just feel too tight and my feet just want a little bit of a break. Running in them, they, they're fine. Uh, I've been able to run in this shoe from most of the runs are in the six to seven mile range, but as much as a half marathon uh, and up to 16 miles for today, and I absolutely no problem running them. These shoes were great to run in. I do think they like running kind of at your medium paces. Some of the easier paces, uh, when you're landing on the heel a little bit more, I didn't seem to like this shoe as much. I don't feel like it's as smooth when you're right landing a little bit more like midfoot and back. But when you're in your moderate paces where you're landing midfoot and forward, uh, this shoe I think just does a really great job of being that daily trainer that you're looking for. In terms of the wear on the bottom, uh, I mean the React is holding up fantastically well. When the first Epic Reacts came out and they had the different uh, rubber pattern on just the top of the forefoot and just at the way back of the heel. I always thought that Nike had made some sort of mistake and that they hadn't put enough rubber on the bottom of the shoe. This shoe from the version one to version two has the same rubber and react pattern and there's a lot more rubber on it. And I'm thinking maybe it's not necessary. I don't know that we need that much rubber on this shoe. With the areas where there's differences in rubber or more rubber versus the Epic React, I'm seeing almost no wear on this shoe. And instead what I'm feeling, because there's more rubber in here, I think that it's a little bit heavier and the ground contact feels less soft. So I'm feeling less of the React and I'm feeling a little bit more, I think, stiffness because of the amount and the placement of the rubber on this outsole. So I'm definitely uh, taking back what I've said about the Epic React rubber outsole patterns uh, because this one has me wishing that it was shaped more like the Epic React. In terms of the areas where the React foam is directly contacting the ground, there is a very, very little wear, even on the parts of the rubber that are contacting the ground, very, very little wear, except in the usual spots where I see it uh, in the forefoot and also in the right rear heel area. That's where I always do a little bit of rubbing and so that part's wearing down a little bit. On the left foot, there's almost no wear uh, on that part of the heel. I think just my right foot, I don't know, drags a little bit more in terms of my foot strike. So I think that's where that wear is coming from. But Overall, this outsole is holding up extremely well. The React foam is holding up extremely well, as I expected. My version one Epic Reacts, I took well over 300 miles and they still had plenty of life in them before I retired that shoe. Uh, and I would expect the same thing out of this. Uh, I don't think that they've changed any of the midsoles from version one to version two in terms of the Epic React or the Odyssey React 2. And so if you have an experience in version one, you're gonna get the same performance in version two, so that's a good thing. Uh, the other little things that kind of bothered me over time with this shoe, and there weren't that many, is the part with this tongue. It's really thin, and because the shoe's so snug, when you put your foot in it, it kind of folds over on itself and creates like a painful ridge. So you always have to like tuck this and pull this up as you're putting your foot in, otherwise you'll get a lot of pressure point right on the top of your foot. Uh, it doesn't happen when you're running because you'll fix it before you start running, but that never really went away for me. And then the other part was that there doesn't seem to be a lot of lockdown 
uh, around the ankle in this shoe. And one of the things that I found myself doing is because the toe box was so tight, I was tying the laces as loose as possible. I never use this extra set of eyelets on, on any of the shoes that I run in and I didn't use them here. Um, but what I was finding is that because I was trying to keep the toe box and the top of the foot so loose, this area felt really loose as well. It seems to be really low cut and it reminded me not quite as low cut as like the Vomero 14, but it had a lot of reminiscence to that in terms of how little this shoe touches you around the ankle in terms of the collar and, and, and the heel cup. So it's just another thing to kind of keep in mind. Some of you have asked me about this orange piece, the TPU heel counter, uh, and whether this provides any stability. Maybe it does a little bit. My first initial impressions were the shoe that I, I couldn't tell at all whether it had any effect. Uh, and in terms of the heel part of the shoe, it reminded me exactly of the Epic React one. Maybe in some of the later miles more recently, I have either been more fatigued, which is possible. I've been wearing a lot of dress shoes lately for work because I had a weird work project that went crazy long. Um, so that might be what's causing some fatigue in my right heel. Uh, and I also felt it in my left too, but more predominantly in my right but maybe this does have a little bit of an effect. I'm not sure how deep this goes into the shoe, like in towards the center line of the foot. So uh, it's hard for me to say really what's going on with this until unless I took it apart, which I don't really wanna do. Probably gonna donate this shoe at this point. Um, but overall, I don't really consider this a stability shoe. Some of you have suggested that maybe the Odyssey React is the stability version of the Epic React. I'm not sure that I would go so far as to saying that, but I do think that if you're someone that does uh, overpronate uh, on the ankle area, this could provide a little bit more stability. I do prefer neutral running shoes uh, to the extent that shoes with stability tend to cause me pain, uh, but this didn't really bother me at all, so uh, not really an issue. So those are my thoughts on the Nike Odyssey React Flyknit. Two, let me know if you have any questions about it in the comments. I'd love to talk to you guys down there. But before I go, I do want to talk about the charity runner for this week. It's Chad Bowers. He's going to be running the Brighton Marathon in just a couple of weeks, and he's raising money for Cancer Research UK, an organization that provides support and funding for all types of cancer research. And Craig is running the Brighton Marathon in honor of his father, Peter hours. So I was very happy to donate 70 pounds to Craig's fundraising efforts. And I'll post a link in the description in case you'd like to learn more. Thanks so much for watching everybody. That's all I have for today. And I will see you guys tomorrow. Yo, what's going on?